Why would it be keratinized? Okay, let's pop back and look. Okay, what is the structure in the field of view? I uh, don't think it's circumvallate. We're on medium power. So maybe a fungiform. Okay, uh, maybe a fungiform. Uh, maybe a, maybe a filiform. It's kind of pointed. It, and, and none of our slides this semester have good uh, taste buds. I'll show you taste buds with the Kodachromes in a few minutes. Okay, but. Come on, you ever been licked by your cat? Uh, Is that a soft, delicate tongue? No. No, because that tongue, those papillae are what? Keratinized. There it is, keratinized. Yeah, see? And, you know, you sit around in class all day eating apples, uh, your tongue will get keratinized. Okay? okay. And, and so, uh, there, there tends to be... Yeah, I'm picking on somebody back there. Uh, there tends to be a keratinization uh, within the mouth uh, where there's a lot of, of you know, eating rough foods, that kind of thing that causes friction, and gums and tongue can <laughs> become keratinized. So here we see a good example of that keratinization. Uh, start going along here and I start seeing little points on these uh, papillae. That's a good, uh, we would call that a good... Uh, Filiform. I had my mind foliate. Remember, that's that folded papillae along the side of the tongue, the foliate. And uh, we don't we don't have a recognizable sample on a slide. Okay. Oh, one of the things I was looking for, by the way, if I go back here, come on, all the way back here. And I'm getting into muscle now, skeletal muscle, and we see muscle going in different directions. This allows the mobility of the tongue, doesn't it? One answer I often get here is intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. Well, probably both of these are intrinsic muscles. Intrinsic muscles are those which begin and end within the tongue, origin and insertion within the tongue. At Extrinsic muscles would have their origin where? On a bone, like the hyoid bone or the jaw, okay, would be the origin for the extrinsic muscles. Okay. <clears throat> Can anybody get a feel for and identify this already? Any idea what it is? Need higher power. Oh, some clues are starting to show up. Can you recognize these things around the arrow? What do we have? Mucus tubules. Good, Kelly. Good. You have mucus tubules there. And what are these? Cirrus So if we go on to the higher power, good examples of uh, Cirrus Okay, and hopefully up here, uh, some moderate examples of mucus tubules. So where are we? <coughs> good, good. We're in a submaxillary gland, a salivary gland, and as I look around, I see this structure, which is a what? What does that look like? A duct. Very good. And what kind of tissue is that? Simple, cuboidal. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Columnar. Look how tall. Look below the tail of the arrow. See, those cells are actually quite tall with the nucleus in the center. Yesterday it came out when we were doing some of this review that students were thinking if the nucleus was in the center, it's cuboidal. At the bottom, it's columnar. No. It's the height of the cell. If the cell is tall and skinny, that's a column. So it's columnar. Okay. So if the cell is tall and skinny, that is a columnar cell. Okay. Um, so identify the structure indicated by the pointer. The structure is a 
Ah, I'm even hearing you throw in for free what I didn't ask for, the location, the interlobular duct. What tells you it's interlobular? It's outside of the lobules. Uh, inter means like between. It's between the lobules in the connective tissue. Okay, good answer. Um, Okay. Oh, that's right. I don't like this slide. <laughs> Just remembered how much I don't like this slide. Identify the tissue indicated by the arrow. Can you identify that tissue? You would want to say something like a, a what? Keratinized. It's actually non-keratinized. That's what I mean. Well, it really meant yeah, the nuclei are there. That's a very poor example of what organ? Wait. Esophagus. Esophagus. There we go. Yeah, it's esophagus. And I got to go find a better slide for esophagus. <coughs> because I would never, ever put that on a test. I mean, that's horrible. Uh, okay, identify the organ in the field of view. Organ is? I hear trachea. Good, good, okay. Uh, identify the structure. It's a cartilaginous ring. The tissue is hyaline cartilage, okay? Um, oh, do you know what that is? <sighs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll play with it and show you uh, just because of this, this particular slide. Identify the tissue? Adipose. Where do you find it? Except the lungs. <laughs> okay. Uh, see, and there's our cartilage ring, there's our vein. Uh, identify the tissue. Ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelial tissue. I'll go across the lumen. Okay, oh, what's that? Snot. Uh, there's our ciliated pseudostratified columnar. There's some more cartilage rings at the tip of the arrow. And I'm coming back. There it is. Identify the organ in the field of view. The organ is? The esophagus. This is a pretty decent view of esophagus. And if we take a look at that uh, tissue. Great. That is obviously good non-keratinized stratified squamous. Okay. Um, identify the tissue indicated by the pointer. Huh? I heard it right off. Smooth muscle. Okay. What is the layer indicated by the pointer? Muscularis mucosa. I hear it. Yes, excellent answer. Good job. Okay. And if I go on outside of that, I'll go back to a lower power. See, right there is the muscularis mucosa where the arrow's pointing. I go out through the submucosa, and here, <coughs> this tissue is what? Muscle. Okay, which kind? <laughs> 